All right, it is six o'clock. It is Wednesday. It is time for the weekly conversations with Cougars. And I'm so glad that we are here tonight. And at this time, I've got one of the, the OGOCs, <laughs> the original Cougars. Marty Mathis is with us tonight. Marty, thank you for, for making some time. And I really am looking forward to our conversation tonight. How are you doing? Doing well, Bernard. Thank you. I want to, and I want to say, start off for sure, how much I appreciate you doing this. I've told you this off camera personally, but just for it's, it's touching so many people and it's, it's such a good thing. And I know it, it takes a lot of energy and uh, effort on your part. I'm really grateful that you're doing that. I appreciate you reaching out to me and asking me. Um, I appreciate having the opportunity to, you know, I, I think OG's just code for I'm the oldest guy you've interviewed yet. I think that's what that really means. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's very kind of you. But as I, I, I think I may have told you or I've said on here, I'm the one who's getting the most joy out of this because I'm getting to meet Cougars from all generations, yeah. all times. Yeah. And even though we played at different times, we have a lot of similar experiences, some of the same coaches, obviously the same facilities and those kind of things. And that's what makes it kind of fun. Even guys who played in the 2000s have a lot of similarities to folks who played in the 70s and 80s. And yeah, that's what's yeah. been so much fun for me. But guys, you may not recognize Marty now, but he was number 62 back in the day playing linebacker and offensive line, 78, 79, and 80 teams. So he was on the field for the very first year. And so, Marty, I know you weren't originally from Dothan. Your right. family moved when you were middle school. But what I want to ask you, with older brothers going through high school before you, mm -hmm. did you have any, any allegiance at all to Northview or Dothan, or did you care? Did it matter at that time? Or when did it start mattering to you where you ended up at high school? Right. Well, yeah, like um, I, well, I hadn't gone to Dothan High or Northview. I had an older brother that he, he had already um, graduated, and, and he, he didn't go to either school. Um, but I had a brother, Randy, who's a year older than me. And um, he wound up, obviously, in the ninth grade, I was at Girard. He wound up going to Dothan High in the 10th grade. And then he was that group of guys that came over for their junior and senior year. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm not. And I think about that with those those guys, those juniors and seniors. A lot of them, you know, that's all they knew was Dothan High. That's they had lived their whole life to want to graduate Dothan High. And, um, you know, I, I know it was I, Obviously, I didn't realize it at the time. You just don't think that way when you're when you're a kid. But you know, as an adult now, you you realize what it took for them, you know, to to, to be able to to kind of shift that allegiance and really kind of buy into Northview. So, but no, I, I was excited to be. I, you know, I mean, we're the first, you know, one of the, the first class to start a brand new school. So, I mean, you you couldn't ask for anything better than that. Yeah, that's. I'm sure. I'm sure. Depending on if you had been in Dothan for 20 years and you had older siblings who everybody went through the Dothan right, high right. programs, I could see that mindset, but I could also see a mindset like yours new to the city. And it's probably was at that time, very exciting to be part of something brand new. Now was, was 78 your sophomore year? Yes. All yeah. of 78. Cause I guess yeah. back then yeah. it was still the junior high system. So right. you were right. at Gerard. Right. And, uh, but I want, that's what I want to ask about, a little bit about ninth grade and junior high football, because by the time mm -hmm. I came through, and I'm not that much younger than you, we had, it was the middle school system. So that was sixth, seventh, and eighth. We had Beverly, right. Honeysuckle, Carver, and Gerard. But when you were at Gerard, when it was, I guess, seventh, eighth, and ninth, there was maybe young junior. Uh, right. I, I killed Carver. I'm not sure all the schools. Talk a little bit about the ninth grade experience from a, a either from an athlete standpoint or, or a student standpoint or a little bit of, of both. Well, um, from a student standpoint, uh, if it if it weren't for uh, Rob Landham and Sandy Dunseth, I probably wouldn't have passed Spanish. So I was really glad to have them in that class. That really helped a lot. Um, but no, um, we moved to Dothan when I was in the middle of my, of my sixth grade year. And um, we, we lived on the. I guess the east side of Montgomery Highway. And so um, I was initially zoned for Dale County. I went to Dale County School my first half year. And then the next year I got zoned to Webb for some reason. And then I finally got zoned for Gerard. So I was going out for spring practice for every football. And then, but then the next year I was at a different school. And so, you know, 
so when I got to Gerard, finally, um, I, I wanted to play and I, I was, you know, I had a lot of spring practices under my belt, but past that I, I didn't, I played pee, I played Pee Wee baseball mostly. I didn't, I didn't play even Pee Wee football. Um, so, so all this was really pretty brand new to me. Um, so, but you know, I made some really good friends that, um, in the eighth grade and then in the ninth grade when we started playing football, um, you know, I, I remember, I didn't know what else to do. So I figured, you know, I didn't think I was big enough to be any kind of lineman. And I certainly wasn't fast enough to be any, any kind of skill position, but I thought, well, I, I could be a fullback. You know what I'm saying? I, I figured I, I can be slow, but I'm willing to block somebody. But um, I think um, it was uh, Bud Young. I think he, uh, he, he was, he was a little bigger than me and he, he wound up he, and plus he knew what he was doing and I didn't know what I was doing. So uh, he, he wound up in the fullback position, but, you know, Coach Hicks was there, and he, he was an excellent coach. He was just a good man and a, and, a, and a really good coach and did well helping to prepare us. Um, so, you know, and I, I – those guys from that class, and we'll talk about, you know, Kirk Patterson, Rob Lindenham, um, Mike Durden, Larry Parker, um, you know, just, just Reed o – well, no, actually, I think Reed went to Young in his junior high school year. Um, so, so those were the guys that I got to originally meet and play with. Um, and I'll tell you the story that uh, I uh, we were I think it was maybe the second game of the season and we were playing I, I don't know what it was a team in Panama City I, I can't remember the name of it I just now, is this that. your ninth grade year this is my older? ninth grade year yeah that was the only year I actually started playing right 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 <laughs> so this is my first year and uh, you know I, I'm giving it all I got but I'm pretty sure you know I'm just kind of winging it I don't I don't know what I'm doing so I, so I think I want to be a, a linebacker and um, so. I promise, Bernard, this is a true story. We're, I'm standing on the sideline. I may have even been sitting on a bench. I'm holding my helmet. I don't, I don't even have it on my head. Mm-hmm. And Coach Hicks yells, Mathis. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I promise you, in a split second, I'm thinking, oh, the trainers must have forgot something. He must need me to go run back and get something out of the bus. Or, you know, I have no, I have no idea. So I go running up to Coach. And I go, yeah, Coach. He goes, go in for Lane. Talking about Charlie Lane. He was playing at, at the time. He was playing the, the linebacker, and the, it was a defensive front position. Mm-hmm. And I go, okay, Coach. And then I realize I don't have my helmet in my hand. You know what I'm saying? So I got to run back. I just grab a helmet, not even sure if it was mine at the time. And that's that's how I wound up on the field in ninth grade. And um, I, I managed to keep playing after that. So I guess I did something right. But, you know, I got down on the line, and I think we are on like a 60 – front or whatever and instead of being back I was on the line and I you know I look up and the guy in front of me's got a full beard and I'm going how is this I, you know what I'm saying what have I gotten myself into so uh so that's that that's really my Gerard story I really I don't maybe I was traumatized I don't remember much after that but uh you know you know it's I, like those those <laughs> those funny videos you see today where it says it shows you the photo or the the video still it's about this time where he realized he had really messed up and then exactly. they back up and then they run it to, to that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I will say, I appreciated coach Hicks. I, you know, obviously he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself that at least he felt like I, I belonged on the field. And I certainly wanted to, to do my best to prove that that's where I belonged at the time. So I, I was really grateful for, uh, you know, him giving me that opportunity to play. Well, Marty, we've got some some folks who've been rolling through, some of whom were your teammates back in the day. Uh-huh. Charles, Bron- Charles Bronson. Okay, H-Bud. yeah, yeah. See you, bud. And uh, I think a, a woman who you may know, Jenny Mathis, is with us. I, I've, I've heard of her, and she ain't my sister, I can yeah. tell you that. <laughs> uh, oh, we got one of my teammates, Coach Mike Henry. Hey, Mike. Okay, okay. Doing yeah. Yeah. You talk about a ball hawk. You can oh, have yeah. your Trayvon Diggs. I'll take Mike Henry any day, <laughs> all day long. Wow. Anyway, Mike, yeah. thanks for stopping by. Uh, Marty, let's talk a little bit about uh, that field behind the school at Gerard. Mm-hmm. By the time I mm-hmm. came through in the early 80s, it was nothing but pebbles, dirt, glass, and very little grass. Do we have your class yes. to thank Right, right, yeah, yeah, for, for us yeah. a few years yeah. later. Yeah, it wasn't quite that bad when we got there. It wasn't great, but it wasn't quite that bad. Yeah, I think we uh, you, we left some sweat and blood on there for you. Yeah. You know what was the biggest uh, tease to me is you're practicing in August, getting ready for the season, and directly across the street is what? The Azalea Country Club. And right, the right. And all your friends <laughs> over there, not 100 yards away, just right. having a big old time. Having a great and time. And occasionally... Yes, 
and occasionally yell in your name because they recognize oh, wow. you on the field and like yeah yeah now what are we doing anyway right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny all right so you get the the year ninth grade year mm -hmm. is fall of 77 spring of 78 Northview's mm -hmm. opening that fall mm -hmm. do you remember conversations about coming to Northview being a student mm -hmm. coming to Northview and being a football player when did they when did all of that transpire before ninth grade actually started so you you mean during the ninth grade or, or before 10th yeah, grade I, started I'm sorry, before 10th grade started. yeah 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 now keep in well, mind Randy Hicks has just joined us and uh -huh. he knows he'll remember so you better right. be straight <laughs> no listen I'll be and I hate because obviously, you know, he, he's at least a couple of years older than me. So but, you know, I I, I feel like we I, I need a ticker that says anything I say could be a lie or just ignorantly untrue. And I, I you know, I apologize. Those disclaimers are, are, right. are, are everywhere. Are OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, you know, we 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 had to go over for spring practice um, if we were going to play football. Right. And um at the time, I don't, I don't even think Northview was finished. I think they were still kind of, you know, you know, putting the uh, finishing touches on, on all the mm -hmm. facilities and we didn't have a place to practice mm -hmm. and uh, to do spring practice. So we wound up going to Rip Hughes stadium. Um, so mm -hmm. that was kind of our, how we got, you know, how we got introduced to at least the notion of, you know, meeting the coaches and other players. And, and this is when, you know, you got, you got Reed coming from young and different, mm -hmm. you know, uh, junior high schools and, and then, you know, I mean, uh, so so that was kind of what, what I recall where we first kind of got kind of got introduced to it. Um, I don't remember so much, um, you know, from an academic standpoint. I remember the first time I went on the campus and I, I thought, man, this this is this is college. I mean, this is so spread out, you know, I mean, and it was just so, you know, um, just, you know, and obviously everything state of the art at the time because it's brand new. And so, you know, now, let me ask just, you this. From where your house was geographically located, mm -hmm. when you at going to Webb, going to Dell mm -hmm. County, then mm -hmm. coming to Northview, which of those drives was the shortest of the three from a commute to school? So, um, yeah, I, Webb was crazy. I, I, I have no idea. I don't, you know, I have no idea it what was going crazy. on there. And, uh, and I didn't know any better about Dell County wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, but and, and Gerard wasn't wasn't too bad, and, and neither was Northview. We would just kind of go the back way. And uh, mm -hmm. Warren McNeil, Rob Ledham, both kind of lived in between me and there. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I was I'm I'm kind of younger. I don't I didn't uh, I didn't get my license. You know, my birthday's in July, so I was always one of the young, last guys to get my license. Right. So right, um, you know, Warren McNeil would give me a ride home every now and then, and Rob Ledham would and until I until I could get my license, but. We we'd go the we'd go the back way. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. Not um, bad. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But. Well, well, how how exciting, how difficult, how stressful was that spring training for ninth going into tenth grade? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll I'll preface this with a with a quick story. I, I, I we just had our forty year class reunion um, last month, and and Rob Ledenham and Reed Oates were there. And, and so we've been talking a little bit and I was talking to Rob and um, when we, when we went over, there's a senior um, offensive lineman, his name's Ben Matthews. And um, Rob saw him years later, he had joined the Marines and they were talking and uh, um, he said, so Ben, how, you know, how's the Marines? And Ben looked at him and said, it was no tougher than a Northview football practice, you know? <laughs> wow. Wow. So I was like, well, that kind of puts it in context, you know, it I mean, really I, I'm sure, does. I'm sure it was, but I think he was making the point. Um, but, um, but yeah, we, you know, we got to, rip, and there was just, I mean, everybody wanted to be on the football team. There were well, so, I, was gonna ask you, I bet I mean, there was a large number of guys. Oh, yeah. Came out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say more than a hundred and, and it, and it seemed clear that their goal was to cut that number in half, you know, and, and really only have people who, who could, who could make it. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you know, we're still ninth graders. Right. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm, you know, I'm I'm looking at David Carmichael. He's bigger than my dad, 6'2", 220. And I'm th this guy's bigger than my dad. He's a grown you know, man. I, in high oh, school. He's a, absolutely. <laughs> um, and I think I sent you one of the one of his pictures in the in the annual. Yeah. But, I mean, his neck was wider than his head. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, he's got that Arnold V shape. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Well, that picture was you like. 
well, one of these things is not like the others. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so, so, so yeah, so we're coming over still, you know, obviously we're still in the ninth grade, but we're, you know, we're blooming sophomores. And um, so when they're hand, and, and so now we've got a bunch of equipment, right? We, we don't have enough equipment. We're, we're, right. uh, we're scraping the barrel for equipment. Right. So of course I, I, I get a helmet that instead of fitting like this kind of fits like this, you know what I'm saying? You just got to kind of get it back a little bit and get it back. You know, while you're talking about that, look over my shoulder. <laughs> this helmet is a 1979 helmet. I don't know if you recognize the face mask, but uh -huh. is there any chance that this could have been one of yours? <laughs> <laughs> if it's extra, extra large, then yes, there's a good chance it could. So I, I didn't mind it. I was just glad to have a helmet, you know, and at the time I'm just, you know, what am I going to complain? You know, so, but what happened was, so, I mean, the, the first day we're hitting, so, of course, the helmet comes down. And so at the end of practice, I got a nice gash right here, right? Mm -hmm. Which is fine. You know, comes with yeah. the territory, no big deal. But what happens tomorrow? I reopen it again. Mm -hmm. I reopen. So for, for whatever, two to three weeks, mm -hmm. it, you know, I just keep me a good gash right in, right in my forehead mm -hmm. because it just keeps getting opened up every time. So, you know, it, it was... Um, I bet that helped to define your persona. If you got the blood coming <laughs> exactly. down, Matt's exactly. business. Yeah. Y'all don't no, want to mess yeah, with maybe. him. Maybe. Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I was anything physically not to be messed with, but they at least knew I had a lot of heart, you know. I, maybe, He's crazy. Maybe I was, He's crazy. Who, who, who was the Braves pitcher on the mound last night? That you know, Morton, pitched, yeah. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pitched about, what, eight or 12 more pitches with a, with a, a cracked uh, tibia or fibula, I think. So, yeah. So, yeah, so maybe, I, I, I don't know. I remember it being freezing cold. Mm -hmm. I remember, yeah, and it was raining on top of being cold. Mm -hmm. um, you were there to dark every night. And again, I, I, I didn't really have a whole lot to compare this to. So I'm just thinking, geez, you know, what have I gotten into, you know? But I, I mean, I, I, I just quitting is just never was an option. Not even to think about it. It's just, it's just not, it's just not there. It's just not and there. Where, you know? where were they having you work at? What positions? So, well, uh, well, again, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't look like an offensive lineman. So I'm, I'm doing line, I'm doing linebacker, you know? Um, so kind of an inside linebacker and, and Rusty Clark, who's uh, another grown man who, who was, a, uh, I think he was going in as a junior and um, you had, um, let me, I, I, I got a few notes here because I want to make sure that Scott Sprouse was number 44. He, he, he was an incredible linebacker and him and Rusty Clark. And then, you know, I got Kirk Patterson in front of me and, um, you know, all, all, all kinds of guys. So I'm, but I'm good. I just want, I just want to make the team, man. You know what I'm saying? I just want, I, do. I just want to you hit a growth spurt yet. So uh, I, I never heard, I never hit a growth spurt, Bernard. I, oh. <laughs> there, there was no growth spurt to have. I don't, I don't know if you, uh, uh Mark Kingry had a, uh, had a mm -hmm. newspaper article up the other, the other day about, and it had him in it, but it was, it was going into our senior year. You know, and it was the only returning offensive lineman is Marty Mathis at five nine one sixty. I was like, oh, "Are you kidding me?" The oh, football weighs more than I do. You know. Well, it's you know, I, I have some perspective because by the time I came through eighty four eighty five seasons, I outweighed my two tackles. Wow! By five or yeah. ten pounds. Yeah. But those yeah. two tackles were the toughest linemen on the right, line. Right. 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 They just yeah. were pound for pound could get it done. Yeah. Yeah. And you wouldn't have, you would not have been playing where you were had the coaches not felt the same. Right. Right. Well, I think it helped because we had, you know, I was the pulling guard. Mm -hmm. um, so for, you know, even though I wasn't that big, I, I, you know, I could, I could get around a little bit and, and I, I had good form. I could get in your way and I, I, I'd give you everything I got, but you know what I'm saying? So I, um, I most do. of the time that worked out pretty well. And what folks may not realize is the type of offense that you guys were running back then was not the modern passing game. Far right. from it. Right. Far from you know, it. We're yes. throwing maybe yeah. <laughs> three times, four times a game. Right. 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 Well, when you have Steve Entz and uh, uh, Dwight Jones in your backfield, you know, you, you want to run the ball as much as you can. You know, well, I mean, I that just makes good sense. To say when you guys, that first team in 78, your sophomore year, it was, it was a winning team. It was a winning season. Right. Right. And then you're, and exactly. I'm not trying to skip around, but in 79, you guys went nine and two. Nine and two. Who, yes. Who does yes. that? Yeah. The brand new 4A school in yeah. the state of Alabama as tough as football is. Yeah. 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 We go nine. We go, we obviously we go nine and one for the regular season. And that mm -hmm. one loss was an overtime to Enterprise, 14 to 15. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, and that that and that that was an incredible class. I, I, it was interesting. I looked the senior players. There were fourteen seniors that first year. Mm-hmm. Um, the second year, there were twenty or twenty one seniors mm-hmm. in a four A school, and then my senior year, there were about I think about fifteen seniors. So that 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 seventy nine crew was a, a, a little bit uh, you know had had a, had a, some better numbers. And, and, and again, man, they just had, I mean, they just had meat, man. They just were well, just and, good and Marty, what One thing that it needs to be put into perspective from a time standpoint, that 79 team was supported by sophomores who later as seniors won the state title. Exactly. 13 and one. Exactly. So think about that class, that 81, well, there were 80 seniors of 82, but the 81 right. season. Right. They went nine and two as sophomores. Right. And I forget you dipped a little bit your senior year. I can't remember the record. Right. Seven and three. Seven and, and seven three. And, three. and then they go 13. That's probably the greatest three year run. I haven't yeah. looked at it, but maybe yeah. the greatest three year run in Northview history. Yeah. 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 I would think so. I would think so. Those, those were good numbers back then. So, yeah. But that, that, that senior class, man, they, uh, and I, I was just kind of looking. Um, there was a guy, Lim Locke, and then Bill Coggins. I think his mom actually worked in the offices. Um, but, uh, they were, they were, you know, just really good secondary guys. Steve Creel had a lot of interceptions when I, when I, when I look back and remember there was a guy, David Hornsby, he, he played as well. I remember him as a guy. I, I think I've got this right. He, he was, you ever run those people that can take a pencil and they can just balance it on their nose, you know, <laughs> but then he, he would take an extension ladder and put it on his chin and he could just bounce. He just walk around balancing on his chin. Hey, you remember so, back in the day, stupid human tricks, the show, right? right absolutely. Exactly. He could have got on that. So, uh, and, and Marcus Henry was one, he was one of our, he was the best receiver we had and he could fly it. I mean, he was, he was a workhorse. I and mean, again, I we didn't, he was Mike Henry's older brother. Is he Mike's cousin. older brother? Yeah. 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 So, uh, so yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that, that was a, that was a really, um, tough senior class. Those were some, again, th- those, those were just grown men. Certainly that looked that way to me when I'm still in the ninth grade and, you know, I might, I might have two hairs on my chest by then, you know, so <laughs> talk about your position coaches at that time. Who did you have um, as position coaches? Well, at linebacker, I think it was, it was Bubba Johnson, right? I think if I'm, if I remember correctly, cause I think Randy had the line or coach Hicks, I had the line and then coach Johnson had the, mm-hmm. had the linebackers. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so, you know, again, that first season I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just surviving, but, um, um, you know, just trying, trying to learn where, you know, what I'm doing and uh, what I'm, what I'm going to be doing. Um, I, I was talking to Rob again, and he, he told me just to, to talk about that. Uh, one of the, at a one practice, Lim Locke and Coggins were, they were, you know, going, going after each other and hitting each other. And of course, you know, coaches screaming, come on, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, give me somebody in here who wants to hit. So they, so they both go at it, man. I mean, they nail each other. And I, I, I don't remember, but Rob does. He said they both knocked each other out. On that hit, they both were laid wow. out flat on that hit. Well, Marty, um, let me ask you. We've got one of the OGs, Steve Ince, just joined Steve, us. Oh, Steve, oh, can okay. you confirm? Were you there at that <laughs> practice when they knocked each other out? I bet the, uh, that was a massive hit. So, so yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a couple of Steve Ince stories. He doesn't remember them. I promise you, he doesn't remember them. But I, <laughs> but I, have, but I have a couple. Um, so, but 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 yeah, yeah. So I, you know, it, it's funny. And I'll tell people this: when you invited me, I texted you back and I said, "Hey, Bernard, I don't know if I don't know how well you know me, but I was an undersized offensive lineman, and we never won a state." I said, "What? What? What do you want to talk to me about? You know what I'm saying? There's, there's I nothing. Want to talk about everything else, right? <laughs> know, right? And you were like, you're like, you know, you're, you know, and like what you said. I'm an OG, and you want to know about these guys. And so, it's interesting because I took that to heart, and I was like, you know, I really, I, I want to represent these guys well. I really do. I have, a, I have a ton of respect for them. The fact that they had to leave the school that they were committed to and commit to a brand new school, had to leave friends that they had played ball with probably their whole lives, yeah. and 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 they dedicated themselves to giving Northview the best. And and they were great upperclassmen as far as I was concerned. I mean, I you know, I I wasn't a blip on the radar. They were always very respectful, and they were always trying to teach and coach and. You know, I, I have nothing but respect for those guys. I really do. That's very cool for you to say. And that that probably with not me knowing you until recently, 
probably demonstrates what type of a teammate you were back in the day and going forward. But I do have to ask this. You okay. and I came along at a time where water breaks and Gatorade really was not the norm. <laughs> Salt no, it, no, or maybe not. just a little swig of some water out of a hose. But I got to yeah. ask, what is honey water? Yeah, I, listen, I, I had to verify this. So I, I've been, I hope Steve can or whoever else might be on there. Um, so I, I, I checked with Rob. I, I think, well, I'm, I'm not going to say where it comes from because I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, so, my, so Gatorade was just kind of coming out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it had, I mean, it had, yeah. been, it had been created and invented and used in different areas already, right. but, but but like as far as being marketed and kind of a thing. It sure didn't make it to Wiregrass or Northeast yeah, football. Practice. It did not. It did not. <laughs> I remember, yes, we very much were aware of that. And so, so yeah, so there was this, it, instead of just regular water, which as you said, you, you there was no such thing as a water break. It was, you know, you, you might get something eventually. And I mean, seriously, I Reed and Rob and I were talking, and I mean, you're you're if you're praying to God it rains so you can just like get some drips That's off right. your ass helmet just to get That's some right. just to get some kind of water, you know. Um, but yeah, there was this there was this honey water thing, um, and so but that and it sounds like it might be good, but there was nothing sweet about the honey. I don't know where it came from. Uh -huh. It was terrible. I mean, terrible. I mean, and, and I mean. To, to want a liquid as much as you wanted at that time and then just to go, man, that's terrible. And so, I mean, some of the, the, the cups would have, we'd have ice. And so we'd like throw out the honey water and just suck on the ice cubes just yeah. to try to get, you know, because, so, I, I mean, I, 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 I remember go ahead. guys taking their sweatbands off, yeah. bringing them. Oh, so <laughs> disgusting. Steve Vince says he remembers having a hose. Uh, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there was a hose, but you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninth grader Marty wasn't in line for that hose. I can uh -huh. do that. Steve Vance could probably walk up and use that. <laughs> <laughs> Let Let's go off the field for a few minutes. Uh -huh. Let's Let's talk about dances at Doug Two. Oh, I know you've really? got some stories because okay. that's okay. I think okay. dances at Doug Two. Oh, we <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold the phone. Right. Slim McDuffie is now entered the okay. conversation. Okay. Okay. He right. said that he used to have to suck water out of the sprinkler heads. <laughs> yes, out of the sprinkler heads. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, Absolutely. Boy. You'd stand oh, in a line to try to guard for the guy behind you. You would yeah. you'd all stand guard so if he could get down and try to suck something out of the sprinkler heads to just get a little bit of water and not get caught. Yeah. yeah. Is there any yeah. way we blame Coach Parrish or Coach Hicks or Coach Johnson, or that's just the way it was? The hey, whole... hey, that, that's what made us nine and two. And and win a state champ. I mean, that's I'm a, I'm old school, so I, I can't hey, say that on the record for my profession and what I do because that it was child abuse. But <laughs> back in the day, it's what uh, it's what it's what got you a state title. It was a know? mentality. Yes, it was. Yes. It was a team mentality, and I know that things weren't done ha haphazardly by the coaches. I'm not trying to say that. Right. I just know that they had a common goal, and then it fed to the players. Because yeah. you don't go six and five, nine and two, seven and three, and thirteen and one in the first right. four years of a program. Of a program, exactly. You don't exactly, particularly yeah. in four A Alabama football. Yeah, yeah. Doug two. Let's talk about those dances. All right. Well, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna start before that because um, these, these these are the two Steve Ent stories that he doesn't he has <laughs> has no memory of. And, and the he, he of limitations is long <laughs> right. expired. Long so gone. Long it. gone. Long gone. <laughs> right. Right. So, so it's my junior year, and, and for some reason, I got I got to play offensive. Well, I know Mike Marshall, who was a great offensive lineman. He was the the year before as as a junior, he was the offensive lineman of the year, and he got injured, and, and unfortunately for him, he was a great. He, he is a great guy. I saw him a few years ago in Dothan, um, and he was an excellent football player. And he got injured, and so that that opened that left guard spot, um, and so. Again, I think because maybe I could pull a little bit and, you know, that, that, that maybe fit what the, the little bit of skill set I had. So so I'm playing that position and it's my junior year. So, um, you know, Dwight and Steve are in the backfield and I we might have been playing Dothan, but um, I jumped off sides. And I, I, I'll say I didn't normally do it. I really didn't. I was pretty disciplined in that area. You know, so I jumped off and then I was down on a knee and I was mad. I was so mad. at my, I'm just mad at myself. Right. And I'm just I'm God, I'm just, you know. Yeah. Well, the linebacker comes up and just knocks my head off. I didn't see him coming because technically he can hit me, right? Because I've moved, yeah. right? So he can come yeah. make contact. So so the three seconds it took me to figure out where I was again, I get up and I'm like, I'm about to go after this guy. And all of a sudden somebody picks me up and carries me back and strops me down and I turn around and it's Steve Ince. So he saved me from not, you know, just a, a false start from a false start and potentially a personal foul. 
-hmm. So, uh, so that's my one story that I'm sure Steve doesn't remember and, and is when he picked me up and turned me around and said, Hey man. So, so then this leads to Doug too. So we're at a dance at Doug too. And Dwayne Medford's a guy that he, he played football, a real, real tall guy. And we were in the same class and I guess him and some guy were beefing over a girl. Imagine that in high school, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so he and this guy start fighting and Doug too over this girl. You know, and I'm, I'm there with Doug. I mean, he's, he's guy I'm just kind of hanging with. And so I'm like, okay, well, he's a big guy. He can hold his own. Mm -hmm. So then, so then the guy he's fighting another guy, his buddy jumps in, you know? So I'm like, well, now the numbers aren't right. Even though, even though Dwayne's a pretty big guy, you know, the numbers right. aren't right. So, so, so I jump in, I feel like that's what I'm, I'm his friend. That's what I'm supposed to do. So, you know, th things are, things are happening. And all of a sudden I feel somebody pick me up carry me back, set me, stand me down. And I turn around and it's dadgum Steve Ants again. And he's like, Marty, the cops are coming. You might want to get out of here. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't make it. We got out, but I got out in the back of the cop car, but oh. it, it, it's, it, it never went on my record. I'm good. Right. Like you said, statute of limitations is gone, but um, the, the, those are my, those, those are my two Steve Ants stories. So again, I, I know he doesn't remember either one of those, but I appreciate him, him helping me out during that time. Again, but, teammates helping teammates yeah. yeah yeah and again that's what i'm talking about he's you know he he's a he's a senior stud you know what i'm saying i'm 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 some guy just trying to you know but i guess i am i am trying to block for him you know what i'm saying I was maybe that say was... you're you're an asset to the team you're helping to protect right him. Right, right so uh wow yeah. now who was who was a quarterback in during this time during your years on the varsity yeah well, D Durden's the quarterback the whole time. He comes in in the 10th grade. He's the starting quarterback, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, obviously, I think he – obviously, um, I rem I think it was the senior year. He, he got hurt, and I know Alford would come in at times for him. Alford was the backup. and uh, But, yeah, I mean, Durden was a – you know, again, he was one of those guys in the 10th grade. You know, he's 6'2", 220. You know, I mean, he's a good-sized guy, you know. Um, so, uh, so yeah, he was, he was the quarterback the entire time. Um, wow, that, that again, having Ince, yeah. Dwight Jones, yeah. Durden yeah. as your yeah. backfield trio, yeah. that solidifies any program on a high school yes. level. Yes. Yeah. Then you got yeah. David offered as your backup. And by the way, David's yeah. going to be on the show in the next week or two. Oh, and great. That's Mike good. On here. But it's, and it would have been interesting let me back up just two seconds. Was Dothan High making the state finals two years in a row, 75-6 or 74-5 with Stedman as their quarterback? They lose to Homewood. They lose to Mountain Brook. Had Northview not become a school and Dothan High continued to be the large school that it was, taking the Dothan High athletes with these guys we're mentioning now, no way they don't <clears throat> make the state finals. And oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, are you kidding me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And Steve wants you to know you were valuable, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, tell Steve, I, 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 well, Steve, I'll tell you, I appreciate that, man. I do. I do. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I was, I was a big Stevens fan. He didn't know that, but I, I really was. I thought he was and really I can assure guy. you as a young dude coming up behind you guys, we knew who all of you were. If you were a yeah. starter or even yeah. if you weren't, when you're in middle school watching the varsity teams do their thing, or even if you're in elementary with this brand new high school, you guys yeah. were gods to everybody who was yeah. younger and on our way up the ladder. Mm -hmm. I've known who all of you guys were because I'm a, I'm a, obviously I'm a, a, a student of the history of the program, but I knew who all of you guys, there was a time I could name the whole starting 22 for almost each, each season. Wow. For, for wow. a time. Wow. I lost a little bit of that, but no, I, <laughs> If you give me a name or something like that, I could pretty much put him right in the in the line of, of things. Oh, Coach Hicks. <laughs> the honey water was from Dr. Patterson, Kurt and Scott's dad. It was to give you quick energy. Doc didn't believe in Cokes or sugar for your body. He right, said, sure. yeah. he says, Coach Hicks says, y'all loved it. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll go with that, Coach. I don't, I don't see why we shouldn't. Go with that. As I'm talking yeah. with Marty Mathis, one of the OGs, one of the original Cougars. We're talking 78, 79, and 80 time. He's just gotten out of a cop car because he went in to defend one of his teammates. And state saves the day. But we're going to go back on the field. I want to talk about some game experience, some of your memories, because as an undersized lineman back then, 
you're not facing undersized defenders in 4A no. Alabama football from Enterprise, Dothan, uh, Jeff Davis, Lanier. All of these are big established mm -hmm. programs and all have big dudes on the other side trying to get at our right. guys. Right. What, how you had good feet. You may have had a little bit from that standpoint, some leverage or some abilities, but how do you defend a bull rush on a guy who weighs outweighs you by 50 pounds? Right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to start with um, the left tackle that, that we were, we were always on the weak side. The left tackle was uh, T hall, Tony hall, who I would, I couldn't give enough shout outs to man. He, I, I don't know. Again, Steve, feel free to type in anything that, that corrects. T hall is at least six, two, six, three, about a good two, two fifty five, maybe. I mean, and, and it, what's interesting is he drove a T top Corvette, which was fantastic, man. He used to, he used to give me rides home too. Sometimes I, I always enjoyed that, but T hall was such a nice guy and such a good football player. And, you know, he, he always, man, I got you back. We're going to do this. We, he and I were a team on that left side. Um, and he was, he was just so good, man. He was, he would, he would always help me out. Flip Span, another guy about 6'1", 240. He's the center. And, I, I mean, all these guys have experience. They're, I, I mean, seriously, I, I think I sent you one picture, it, and it's, it's, it's in the yearbook. I mean, there, there's, there's an angle of the offensive line, and there's big guy, big guy, big guy. And then there, there's this little gap. You can barely see these little hands. There. I mean, these, these guys were grown. I mean, they were, and I'm not playing. They were grown men. And Todd Green was the tackle on the other side. Jack McKibben was the tight end. He had been playing forever, and he's an excellent athlete. Um, you know, and then I think most of, I think for a period of time, Paul Massey, who was he was he was a little bit smaller, but he's still bigger than me. But he was the backup tight end at one point. They moved him to the guard position. So um, the, the the one time it really mattered, we were playing Carver, and I remember we were watching tape, and and they would do they would kind of you know slide down the tackle down in front of the guard, and there was this guy. He was legit, at least that's what I told him. That's what he looked like, 300 pounds. And he'd take this one arm, like he'd be down on a stance, and he'd take this warm arm, and he'd just rock it like this. Like he's like he's just winding up to just knock your head off, you know. So for the whole Carver game, he's right in front of me. And so we hit, you know, obviously, um, you know, T. Hall's trying to take his guy, trying to help me out. I mean, we, we you know, that, that, that was clearly – and uh, I, I've never been more exhausted after a football game because for every snap, I'm just putting my face mask in this guy's gut and I'm just grinding. I, and I, I'm not going to say I ever moved him backwards. <laughs> I will never say that. But there were some plays where he didn't he didn't penetrate. So well, I was going to um, say you occupied enough of that space. Right. Where he wasn't going to make the tackle or, or right. Well, involved. yeah. Well, well, that that was the idea. But again, you know, I had guys like, you know, Steve Vance coming through as a lead blocker or T hall helping me out. Um, but yeah, the, those linemen, man, they, they were, they were great. Man. Um, Marty then, was worse on you. I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, which was worse a Tuesday Northview practice or the Friday game against you pick an opponent. You, you, you know, the answer to that, man, you, you know, the answer to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just, you know, I, I think I I remember watching your interview with Coach Parrish, and I think he even talked about the the spring the, the first spring practice, and he was like, "Yeah, we were we were kind of hard on those boys." And I thought, <laughs> if Coach Parrish says he's hard on you, you you know, you were probably half dead. I mean, because you know what I'm saying. His his normal you know his his normal uh, mode was just you know to to have you dragging off the field. So yeah. so yeah, there there was no doubt we were we were physically ready and, and mentally ready to. And did you ever have the privilege, and I use that word loosely, of having Coach Parrish grab your face mask to uh, to get across a point yeah, that yeah, he yeah, needed yeah. to share with you at the time you had not done something that yes, should yes. have been done correctly? Yes, yeah, a little one-on-one -on -one consultation. And if I didn't know where the consultation spot was, he would carry, he would drag, That's he right. would pull me over there to make sure I knew where the consultation one-on-one -on -one consultation spot was absolutely Mathis so, you should have been driven your guy to here right, right exactly exactly so yeah. uh so but but yeah yeah so it, it was I, I think the the my senior year and I forget I forget the linebacker's name it was the linebacker for Dothan High I, I can't remember but he if somebody said his name I'd know it and uh but I had the I had the opposite problem with him man he I mean, he was fantastic he, he had speed he could read a play I couldn't get to him 
you know, it wasn't that he was bigger than me and running over me. I just couldn't, he was so lateral and he was so quick and I hated that. It was probably my worst game in the two years that I, that I played. He, I mean, he just, and we, unfortunately we, we had beat Dothan had the, you know, the first two years and in, in the program. And then that, that third year, um, I think they won 19 to seven, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, I, I, when I look back, that's the game that I'm most disciplined. And I hate it because it was, you know, it was, it was essentially my last game, but you know, um, it, you know, so I had, those were the two kind of challenges that I remember in terms of, you know, really having difficulty yeah. showing up. It, isn't that remarkable what you just mentioned? It's been 40 years since you put on the pads. I don't mean to age you. No, you're but not. It's, <laughs> it's, no, what I'm saying is, I guess, from, from a once an athlete, always an athlete, at least here. In your mind, yeah. Your physical skills, they're done when they're done, whether you're 10, 20, or whatever it is. But you vividly remember those two games and, and, and you know much better than I ever would just given your training and your profession. But we, at least my experience, we learn so much more and keep those life lessons with us from things where we, uh, at least in our thought process, we did not succeed where we wanted right. to succeed. Right. The, win yeah. the wins are always going to come at some point or another. But my experience and almost every person who's been on this show has shared more about those experiences than they have about the triumphs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I Absolutely. want you to put your professional yeah. hat on <laughs> at the same time from your actual real world experience. Explain that. Why is it that we keep those uh, those situations so much longer in our head? Right. Well, I, I mean, I. I will a little bit, but I, I, I don't, I don't want to too much, but I mean, if you just think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, right. It, if you learn from your mistakes, you're more likely to survive. I mean, it's just plain and simple. You know, if you don't learn from them, then you're not going to continue on. So I, I, I know it, I can't say it's in everybody's DNA. Maybe, maybe it's in some people's more than others. And I can't, I don't, I can't explain that obviously other than whatever your DNA is. No. Um, so it's, it's interesting because I've mentioned Rob Bledenham again, and he's a, uh, um, by the way, if you see a Rob Kevin, he's, he, he was trying to get on. That's that's his pseudo name. But um, he and I were talking yesterday and we were or, and we were talking about how exactly what, what, what you're saying. We almost played more not to lose that, that that meant more losing hurt more than winning than you enjoyed winning. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I mean, if you won, that was great. But you just didn't want to lose. You know, I remember again when you interviewed Coach Paris, who was talking about that first game against Ozark, and he was like, "Man, I, I just, you know, and I get it. It's his first game, head coach, new school." He was like, I, "You know, he's sick to his stomach, just not wanting to, you know, just don't want to lose this game." You know, do you um, think it was that mentality? Was it that you didn't want to disappoint your teammates and your coaches, or is it a bigger something different than that? Because right. here, here's well, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. My senior year, we start out one and three. Lawrence Dossie breaks his arm the first scrimmage, I mean, the first yeah. quarter of our first game. We then win 10 of the next 11 to win the state. But I remember during that, that last two-thirds of the season, I didn't want to let down any of my senior right. fellow seniors. Right. right. More so than anything, that's what drove me. Yeah, yeah. Well, th those guys I'm talking to you about, I, 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 I mean – I didn't know a whole lot, but I knew those, those there were some really talented guys. And I honestly, I, and I'm not just saying this, man, I was, I felt privileged to be playing against those guys. And my goal was to make sure I, you're exactly right. I mean, I think part of it is just innate. I mean, I think it's part of who you are or it becomes part of who you are, but specifically for that, I, you know, I, I knew the, and they, those guys love Mike and it broke their heart that Mike wasn't able to play. And I, I wanted to be able to play, I wanted them to be able to not miss a beat with Mike not being there, but, and I knew I couldn't, but I want, I was, you know, I just didn't want to be the guy that, that, you know, didn't, didn't help them get as far as they could go. And, and, yeah. um, you know, I, and, and I'm, like I said, I'm, I, I know I'm not, I wasn't the talent level as, as Mike, but I, I know that that drove me every day to try to, because I respected them so much. I really did. Isn't that just, that's, that's what I think is one of the genuine beauties of team sports. Yeah, absolutely. Being yeah. part of a unit, you go through battle together, wars, whatever you want to call it, and then you come out on the other side, victorious or not, you've been through it with them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward, you just had your 40th high school reunion. Mm -hmm. How many of your teammates are you still in contact with? You've mentioned, right. you've mentioned several. Right, right. And I just um, think that's one of the things I know that if you were to mention that fight or even one aspect of that fight you were talking about, Doug, too, you don't even have to talk about it because everybody knows the story because they were there. Right. But right. it immediately brings a smile to your face or you guys start laughing or something. And that's what I love about teammates. Yeah. That's what I yeah. love about that. Yeah. So, Bernard, I have, a, I have two sons. Um, one of them's 20 and he's a student at the University of Georgia and one of them's 17 and he's a senior in high school. Um, we, we live in, I live in Warner Robins, Georgia. Um, he plays for a 5A school in, in Georgia and he's a starting middle linebacker. Um, and so he's, he's, he's played for the last two. Yeah. Yeah. He, fortunately his mom gave him some athletic ability. He took all I had and then got the rest from his mom. But, um, and the only reason I bring him up is, we we're, we do, we did a senior ad for him not too long ago, and one of the things about him that he and it's exactly what you're talking about. He is he loves he loves his teammates. He loves being part of a team. He lo he's the guy that always is patting somebody on the back and giving them encouragement and 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 uh, you know trying to make sure they're in the right position. And 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 it doesn't matter. It, I, and, it really warms my heart to see him because it's the same experience I had with, with Steve Ince and those guys, you know, he, he'll, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman or a senior to him, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you get out there and play, he's as happy for you as if you're his best friend or, or, you know, if you're a ninth grader. Um, so yeah, it's just part of that. I mean, it becomes part of that camaraderie and that, and that brotherhood and that, you know, I mean, that you, you know, you fight for together, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it is. and you I'm, do anything I'm, for them. And you have, I'm sure, over the years, anything that's ever been asked of you or even things you didn't weren't asked, you probably just proactively did it just because of who they were. Now, right. is your older son, did he play ball? He he did. He was more of a baseball player. He played, well, they, you know, they did all the sports up until sure. high school, right? And then um, he focused more on baseball. And then he, I, I, it's an interesting story. Um, I remember he finished his ninth grade year in football. And at the high, at the high school, and then he, I, I can, I can, I remember it like it happened yesterday. And he came up to me about a week later. He said, "Dad, um, I don't think I want to play football anymore." Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, you talk about I, it took everything I had as a psychologist, as a dad, as a human mm -hmm. being, because I'm just like, you know. And, and I said, "Well, dude, you know, that's that's your, you know, you got to make that decision, and you don't have to make it now." And if you don't, you know, I'm going to love you no matter what. And I said, and he knows, I said, you know, I love football. I love all sports, but for me, there's something different about football. Maybe I'm just grateful for it because, because it meant so much to me as, as a, as a kid. Um, but you know, in the end, you got to do what you need to do. If you yeah. want to focus on yeah. baseball, that's fine. So it's interesting. I, literally two weeks ago, he came up to me and he said, dad, you know, to this day, I regret it. You know, um, he, he does, he, 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 you know, and, uh, and I hate that for him, but I hope it's something he can learn and maybe, you know, learn from and grow from. Um, so, so yeah. Wow. Now, Wasn't planning on telling that story. Didn't even know that no, was coming. No, no, no. <laughs> and the reason why I ask at what age did they stop rolling their eyes at their dad's high school football stories and start telling them or correcting their <laughs> father that factually you're a little bit off? Right, right. Well, I, I, again, I, I try not to hold too much. I, I talk, I talk more about the again about the team and how successful right. we were at an early right. at an early time. And you know, again, of course, you know. And I was thinking about this the other when you one of the things you asked was just about the experience in general. I mean, I, I'm not even, I'm not even, I don't know. I, I forgot to ask my son today. I don't even, I don't even know if they have pep rallies. He's never, he's never mentioned to me. They might have them occasionally. That, that's I'm one like, of the next things I was going to ask you about. Yeah, I'm like, man, are you kidding me? It that. It, it was worth it just to have that jersey on on Fridays and just be able to walk out with your buddies and, and the place going crazy, you know. And, and you and, talked about the pride of being. A yes, Cougar. yes, absolutely. What was it like in the early years of the school? Now, again, I wasn't that much further behind you. Right, right. But the school spirit must have been unbelievable on in, Friday. In, in, incredible. Yeah. In, incredible. Um, oh, my wife told me they didn't have pep rallies because of COVID. I just heard that in the background. Uh -huh. So maybe, maybe they weren't. He missed, he missed out. He missed <laughs> he out. Missed, yeah. He, he missed out. But yeah, man, I mean, you're, it was just, and you know, I, I think I, I was able to send you that picture again. It was a yearbook picture of, of what Rick Hughes stadium, the, 
the, oh the capacity God, that for that for that first Dothan High game. I mean, you yeah. could you couldn't squeeze another person in there. Yeah. It was absolutely crazy. Um, and I saw I saw Big Ange, Andy Johns commented on that. And so yeah, if you if you can get Steve on here, if you can get Andy on here, the, these guys know way more than I do about even older stuff. And and I'm sure they've got great stories to tell. I'd love to listen to them. But um, but yeah, you know, I, and I remember, you know, the 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 ritual. You know, if it was a if it was a far away game, you, you got Greyhound and you weren't riding in a school bus. You know, I assume the Touchdown Club or the Quarterback Club, or whatever they called it back then, they were doing a good job making you know raising a lot of money. But you know, and it was always a it was a movie and it was a stake at Western Sizzlin and um, I, I do remember the one week though we went to see a movie and we usually saw pretty good movies, you know, and and somehow it was Xanadu, which I think is like some kind of musical with with somebody. I don't know, Olivia but I was Newton like John. Yeah, Olivia Newton John. Who yeah. chose that movie? I, I know, right? I, I I didn't know what it was, and we got in there. I don't know if anybody. I think I don't know if anybody else remembers that, but I, I took and I took we a nap. Rocky Four. We saw exactly. Terminator. Right, right, right. You're, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You're, you're seeing Stallone as Rambo. That, those are the kind of movies you want to watch, you know. Not um, Santa, dude. Man, I'm I, disappointed in that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the worst thing I have to say about my whole football experience was, <laughs> was the time we had to watch Santa. But no, yeah, man, I it got was Marty Mathis. We've got a few more minutes, Marty. Yeah. I know you've got a lot of other teammates you want to mention, or maybe I do stories I do. that I don't want to cut you off. We got first pitch in about 19 minutes. I know. I know. Let's right? keep going. I got you. I got you, my man. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, uh, I've, I've tried to mention a lot of those guys um, and uh, particularly that offensive line um, and, and Steve and, and Doug Jones. Uh, um, Reed Oates, I didn't realize this. You know, when I went back to kind of freshen up a little bit so I could at least tell some truths here, um, uh, you know, R Reed Oates was a starter his 10th grade year. Now, um, now he would, he would block anybody. You know, he was, he was a receiver. Right. Obviously, we didn't right. throw a lot, so you needed, a, you know, a guy who would commit to blocking. And I remember the Ufala game. He did a crackback on the guy. I mean, he, he laid the guy out. I mean, we had to stop the game. They had to, you know what I'm saying? But and I remember the next year when we went back, buddy. It was they 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 wanted revenge. I do I do yeah. remember that. Reed can tell you that story better. Um, I, I can't forget, man. Just some of, some of my grade, man. My my uh, th this phrase was used. Um, you know, you, you've heard the phrase now. I, I don't know if it started with with Drake and Josh, but you know that show about brother from another mother, or that, that sort of thing, or, right. or you That's know. Right. Well, Greg Mathis, who uh, I think this is. We knew him as, as Daddy Fats or Fatso. He was always, which was funny because he was like, you know, he was lean and muscular. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we had lockers beside each other. And he, he was an incredible man. He played everywhere. You know, he'd be a running back, a receiver, defensive end, always had a smile on his face, the nicest guy you would want to meet, man. And I, I, I'm, I was very, very privileged to be his, to be his friend and, and get to hang out with him. Um, I, I did want to say about Doug Jones, too. And, again, Steve can say so much more about this. He was that kind of back. Doug or Dwight? Um, I'm sorry, Dwight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Dwight Jones. You, you keep having to correct me on that. I've got I've got Doug written down, but I mean Dwight. He would. He, he's one of those backs that when he carried it for the 25th time, he was stronger than when he carried it the first time. This guy just didn't get tired, man. He just he was, didn't. He, he was Derrick Henry before Derrick Henry was born. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know Steve loved being in the backfield with him. Um, and so, uh, yeah. And then, oh, golly, Gene Houston, um, he's he's a he plays a, quarterback a and safety and hits right, harder. Right. Oh my God! I mean, he broke helmets, dude. He was breaking helmets. Yeah, I'm telling you, in practice, yeah. this guy, his 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 zero to ten was just off the charts, and he loved to hit. It was his it was his thing to do. Um, you know, and and uh, Audie McCatherin was a was a really good defensive tackle. Had a couple 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 of uh, fumble recoveries that particular times I remember obviously Danny Carmichael Andy Johns you, you know now the phrase is kind of country strong you heard about you know everybody yeah he's country Andy Johns was country strong before country strong baby he's that picture dude, in the dictionary <laughs> oh my god he's he's like like a bag of concrete I mean that guy is just and and again the nicest guy could be I mean, nothing but nice to me the, the whole time I knew him um yeah and then obviously Kirk you know the guys you know Kirk Patterson Rob Ledenham was was a really solid um, um, defensive end. Um, he, he had a couple of fumble recoveries, I remember, and had some good games. Um, Stan Stevens, 
he was playing. We hadn't mentioned Reginald Jones. He was, we, you, there's so many Jones, you know what I'm saying? They're all, it, it's kind of, they all run in my head, but Reginald was our grade. He was mostly, a, he, he did some running for us our senior year. And he was a, he was a, um, I think a corner, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And he was another guy that could just play all night long. And then I remember he got hurt and Stan Stevens came in. And uh, Stan could he could pick the ball, man. He could get an interception. I mean, he had several key interceptions in some games. Um, so, Coach, Coach Jerry Andrews says to take a look. Yes. Hey, Coach, how you doing? It's good to see you um, or hear from you. Um, so, and then obviously Larry and, and Larry. I mean, Larry was good the junior year, but obviously he he just even took it to another level that that senior year. Um, so, but but yeah, man, it, it was it was. It was a great experience. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. It's, it, I, I will tell you seriously, there are times, and, and again, I've, I've talked to friends, but there are times in my life when I think, man, if, if I could play Northview football, if I could, I can, I can do whatever this obstacle is in front of me. I mean, ser- I'm serious, man. I mean, I'm not saying it's all the time, but there have been times in my life where I go, you can finish this. You can do this. There, you find a part of yourself that you didn't know existed, you know, and it just yeah. helps you to, to expand yourself and know yourself even better. I cannot tell you from the players from the era of the first coaching staff, the Coach Parrish, Harry Wayne Parrish era, Mm -hmm. how many former players have echoed your sentiment because of the way the coaches created such an atmosphere and a belief that you could accomplish what needed to be done. Even if you didn't think you had that ability, yeah. They brought it out in you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, with, I, and I, got, I know we got to go. I got, I got two things I want to say. I, I, again, when you were interviewing Coach Parrish, I remember Joseph Johnson wrote a thing about how, you know, all those coaches, and, and it's, it's crazy now because, you know, we're, we're old and, and, you know, they're still kicking for the most part. And I'm like, you know, because then you look back and you go, well, I mean, they barely were grown themselves, you know, and I think Joseph commented they were all in their 30s and, you know, but they, and they were, they were, they were just terrific men. They really were. I mean, I, I coach Griffin, you know, my, my favorite coach Griffinism is what is it? Your, 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 your attitude determines your altitude. Man, I remember him saying that a thousand times and it just stuck with me, you know? Um, but yeah, they were, they were just really good men. They, even though they worked you hard, you knew they loved you and you knew they wanted you to be the best football player you could be. I never got a sense from, you know, there was no arrogance. There was no, you know, anger. I mean, it was, I mean, there was anger, but I mean, you didn't, you didn't see it, you know, I mean. And, so. and speaking of JJ, he just signed on. He's watching right. with us. Okay. Well, and I, I have one more thing to say about JJ there, there, cause there was a group of guys that played football that also sang in the choir and that, and that, that's special in my heart. Cause I was a choir guy. So Joseph Johnson Joe, was in the choir. Mark Kingry was in the choir. Same time I was there. Stan Stevens, the guy I just talked about, who was my who was a senior with me, and then Brent Gilbert has a great voice. He's probably, he, I mean, I don't I don't know as much about Joseph and Mark as far as their voice. I just know um, singing. Brent, with Brent mentioned it briefly. Briefly, he yeah, mentioned yeah, it briefly. yeah. He's he's very he was very talented. I used to I would stand beside him and I didn't read music, but if I could yeah. once I got it once I heard it I could get it and sure. I'd I'd lean over into him to make sure I was getting the right note <laughs> getting awesome. the right note so. Uh, but yeah, that was that was kind of the choir football guy. So we we, we had a kind of little special bond because you know. Um, but but yeah yeah. What a what a magical time, not only for being a, a, a high school kid, but a magical time in that it's the beginning of a brand new school, and you're going through it with new teammates, and you have that success, and you're representing. The, the, well, I'm going to get in trouble with Dothan High people. You're representing the city of Dothan right. from a Northview standpoint by winning games and just doing all of those just incredibly awesome things. There's a reason why the movie, I mean, the the, the song Glory Days is so great. Right, it right. It really does. Yeah. And that's this is the last thing I want to ask you about. Sure. Is music. Give me a couple of songs that still resonate in your head that take you back to ball games or Doug two or your senior year or anything like that. that right. You hear on the radio. Right. It takes you well, back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously Queen. either, you know, we will rock you or, you know, um, any, anything journey Boston. I was a big, I, those were the kind of Steve Miller band. Those were the groups at least that I, I would listen to. 
Yeah. Uh, again, I had older brothers, so I had a little bit more of a 70s group influence, but they, you know, they rolled over to the 80s. So, um, yeah, I mean, those those are the those are the songs. Who was it? Uh, who was it? Little River Band had reminiscing. They had a couple of songs like that. They were kind of a little softer, but I, I, yeah. I'd, I'd get in a little, you know, Little River Band mood every now and then, that sort of thing. But um, we are, the, you know, obviously Queen, we are the champions and all that. Yeah. That's just I mean, that's that's legendary, obviously. But um, so, yeah. Mm. Awesome. Fun conversation, Marty. Yeah. Well, thank I you, really, Bernard. I appreciate it. I really do. And, and, oh, uh, I, I really want to say in, in, any, any of any, and I mean this seriously, any, any, any teammates that I forgot, any, any lies that I told that I didn't mean to, <laughs> I, I really, I really don't mean it. And I, I really, I, I wanted to be respectful for this. I really want to give those guys. And I really hope just, just, I really hope Steve and Andy maybe can, Andy Johns can get on because I, I think those guys deserve even more. And, and I, I want to make sure they, they get their story told the, the way it should be told. Well, I'm, I'm working on, speaking of that, I'm working on something good. I'll tell you about in just a minute that uh, okay. we'll come back to. But guys, it's the end of our, uh, unfortunately, we're going to pause our conversation for now with, with Marty. And what a, a, a fun reminiscing and, and conversation. So many awesome Northview Cougars mentioned tonight and fun memories uh, that this is why we keep doing these each Wednesday night. And I just I love it. We're going to keep coming back each Wednesday night. So thank you again, Marty. I hope you guys out there continue to be safe and do what's right for your family. We will catch you again next week. Right. Take care. Thank you, Bernard. Go Braves. Go Braves.